last panel. It's gonna be fun, feel good. Roger was one of our moderators last year. He is funny, naturally, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> but we have some amazing ladies, my traveling aunties. <laughs> We really wanted to have the underlying theme this year of NMDN be back to the future of travel, right? And the whole concept of that was to bridge the millennial demographic, which the majority of us fall into, with the love and wisdoms and experiences of, I don't want to say our elders, but like... We the Je this is okay. the Jedi Council of Travel right here. This is, <laughs> let me tell you something. Evita, this is... I, I, hung them, I hung out in the back with them. These ladies are ready. Man. Listen, they're always ready. Clearly. They stay ready. Hey, Kathleen. Hey, Kathleen. That's right. That's no, right. but love these women. I really look forward to the insight. You know, be truthful. Drop those gems on us. Let us know what the deal is because I know I personally learn from each and every one of you and I'm very, very grateful that you are here. So thank you. All right, y'all. So get it going. First of all, um, can we give... Can we give uh, Evita and the No Madness team, a round of applause for putting together the second annual No Madness Alternative Travel Conference. This is amazing. There's, there's been so much information given out here today, and uh, we're so honored to close it out with, with, with these special uh, ladies. I was in the back with them, and, um, and um, listen, if you think you're 19 and you got energy, you're moving slow. These ladies right here, doing it. Um, this, the name of this panel is so powerful. It's called Life Lessons. Uh, I won't even say travelers over 50. These are more seasoned travelers. They've been there, they've done that. They've raised that, they've dated that, and they're ready to teach you about that. Let's go. Let's go. First of all, I would love to have you ladies just um, take a brief moment and just introduce yourselves so everybody could um, get to know who you are. Hi, my name is Roz Obayami Barbour. I like to go by Yami, but a lot of people in tribe know me as Roz. I was the original No Madness Travel Auntie. Woo -hoo. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but um, I, I live in Portland, Oregon. Been there a couple years, but I repatriated from um, Kuwait. I lived in Kuwait for seven years. Love the Middle East, trying to go back. Um, so don't let people fool you on that one. Um, I've lived in um, in. Jamaica and in West Africa, and I've been to 45 plus countries you know, so far. Started my first trip out of the country was at 17 as a solo traveler, so I ain't scared of nothing. If I did it at 17, I, I did it at 17 at almost 60. I'm not afraid to do. I told you. This is so um, I, uh, I my 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 profession is I'm a negotiator. Uh, for, I've done it for the federal government, Department of Defense, that's what I was doing in Kuwait. Uh, and here I do it for a private firm, um, but going back to that. So uh, travel is my, that's my, my heartbeat, my passion. And uh, I just wouldn't over advise everybody just to do, follow your passion no matter what your age is. And we'll talk about it, but this one, I met her online and no man is talking about it. She's like, I, yeah. I've been to the Caribbean. But I don't know about going, I said, she said, I'm, I'm 50. I was like, please, I'm almost 60. So, you know, you can definitely do it. And, and since then, we've been out of the country together. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Kathleen Whitelow, and I'm originally from New Orleans. Who that? Who that said they gonna beat them? I told you. Who that? I told y'all. I told you this I is a different type of panel. <laughs> y'all ain't ready. Yes. I told you. So my birthday is Christmas Day, and I'll be 55. That's right. Yeah. And Roz is correct. I mean, my first, I mean, I've always, I'm an army brat, so I actually grew up in Bremerhaven in Frankfurt, West Germany. And so that's when I've always had the travel bug. But for me, my travel extended just to the Caribbean. And then, you know, through the tribe, which is truly family, I have met some people here, Kina, Evita, I mean, so many people, Roz, you know, that will be my lifelong friends. You know, um, but when I met her, she said, you know, you know, just go someplace, go outside of the Caribbean. And so my first trip, I guess, you know, outside of the Caribbean was, let me think, because I've been quite a few places now, 
probably, I think it was Thailand. Wow. Um, and I'm telling you, I, it's just amazing. I tell people, you know, my age, I have my AARP card. Yes. <laughs> yes. Told and I, yes. It's not a I, game. Get, I get my senior citizen discounts. I get my uh, get senior coffee at Half McDonald's. Off. That's it. We going out after this. Forget y'all. Y'all can keep that chance to wrap up. Yes. We, I'm staying right here with y'all. Yes, yes. And so, you know, we'll talk more and answer questions, but, I mean, you know, for anyone that is of a certain age out there, yeah. I mean, now's your time. Now's your time. And you young folks, you know, get ready because the Lord blesses you're going to be our age. You know, so it's wonderful you're starting now. But don't let age define you. Okay? Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> this is going to be good. So these are some hard sisters to follow, okay? My name is Veronica Shepard, and I am from San Francisco, California. And I say it with pride. Say it loud. I also don't understand because my grandchildren have been told I am 39. And I have been 39 for the last five years. And until my grandson said, wait. Grandma, you can't be 39 again. You got to be 40 now. And I said, I'll do 40. But I, too, am almost 60. My oldest child is 43. Wow. And I have the wonderful opportunity of having four children. And my youngest daughter, Maya Shepherd, right here up in the front, has been a great travel nice. companion with my journey. My journey began with a mother who saw the world much bigger than we did in the hood in San Francisco and invited me to China. And it was like, wow. It changed my life. Wow. wow. So I'm here to say, stay amazing and live your best life. Nice. Because when you get to this side of the coin, you see the world so much different. And all the little petty things and the macro and the microaggressions that want to harm us, we have to get rid of it. And we have to love ourselves, for ourselves, because there's so many people that depend on us to enjoy the journey. Nice. So traveling has been my gym. Nice. And last but not least. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. I want to say a tumnal and ancestral blessings to each and every one of you. My name is Elaine Lee, and I'm the author editor of Go Girl, the Black Woman's Book of Travel and Adventure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love That's travel wild. so much, and it is truly the music of my soul, but it wasn't enough for me to just enjoy it. I wanted to share with other black women and encourage them to see the world. So I created this anthology, and it has uh, stories from 52 black women from around the world sharing uh, their experiences in Africa and Asia and the South Pacific. And I have continued on a journey, not only to share the love through, through writing, but all through, so have shape shifted from just being a travel journalist, also to doing tra travel television and, tra and speaking at conferences and different events. So I encourage you all to sprout your wings, find ways to make travel a permanent part of your life. If you really love it like I do, I mean, for me, travel is, is like the bomb in Gilead. When I'm out there on the road, just miracles abound. You know, because I'm able to release my control on life and just let the higher power work through me and adjust. It's, miracles are everywhere. So it's just, it inspires me, it keeps me on the road, keeps me strong. And at 64, I can say that, you know. You're not 64. <laughs> Stop. You know, this is what, this is what 64 looks like That's when you're doing it right. Oh. Yeah, I told y'all. I told y'all. It's going to be serious. So ladies, the first question I have for you guys is, um, when I was doing research, a lot of blogs were talking about um, achieving, uh, you have to travel before you're 19, you gotta get married, you have to have kids, you have to like do everything before you're 25, you gotta um, meet him, meet her, quick. And by the time, after that, after 25, it's over. Talk about, talk about, y'all read some of those blogs too. Talk about um, why at this time in your life, why travel is, is, is more enjoyable? Well, since I have the mic, I'll start first. Um, I gotta give you a little bit of a backstory about my life. My life, I grew up under the regime that women's life was pretty much defined for you and that you are living for everybody but you. 
That's pretty much the ideology of my era. And that's what I did. I ended up living my life for everyone else's life. And it took a loss of a husband after 30 years for me to say, I don't even know who I am. And I realized I had spent a good two thirds of my life living for other people and letting them define me and my value. And it was a beginning of a road of healing for me. And I stumbled across Nomadness in an Ebony Magazine article and said, who are these people? <laughs> what are they doing? And I found this amazing group of men and women who had defied society's view of us. And during that journey, I realized that I am of value. And I could do whatever I wanted to do. And I didn't need nobody's permission to do it. And I started traveling on my own with people I didn't even know. People, my friends said, girl, you crazy. <laughs> Going up, you don't even know them people. I said, I don't even know you. I told you, there's gonna be a lot of hashtag moments. No. This is, yeah. So That's I'm gonna real. take this leap of faith and yeah. let it take yeah. me wherever I wanna go without your permission. Yeah. yeah. And I'm gonna soar this dream of my life. Let's go. Today I'm having this amazing relationship with Veronica. Wow. And it has been awesome. And I do amazing things just because I woke up today. And I don't need nobody's permission to just live in my skin and celebrate Veronica. That's a good, that's great. Any, 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 anybody else want to chime in on that? Like, why is it more enjoyable now? For me, um, I, you know, growing up in the Army, my daddy was in the Korean War, two tours of Vietnam, the first tour is a POW, you know, um, and so I've always, you know, lived in other places as a young girl, but that kind of went away, you know, when you grow older and you're supposed to go to college and get a degree and all of that. And so my background is corporate communications. I'm a company spokesperson, um, you know, for the proverbial nine to five. And so I sort of like lost myself in all of that. You know, because I listen to what society said. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to, you know, go to school, get that degree, get married and have children. Um, I didn't get married until I was 42, mm -hmm. and it was a short-lived uh, marriage. Um, and then Hurricane Katrina occurred, and my family did not evacuate, and it took me weeks to find my family. Mm -hmm. um, we lost some of our neighbors. Their remains weren't found in their homes until months later, some the following spring of 06. And when you go through, my father died a month prior to Katrina. And so, you know, being hit, you know, with two life-changing events, you know, it takes the wind out of you. And so I said that I was going to start standing in my truth. And for me, my truth is traveling. When I travel, I find out who I am. You know, I probably would not have known that, you know, had I not stepped out of my comfort zone. And so my first trip was to uh, Jamaica back in uh, Christmas. My birthday is Christmas Day. So I went uh, for Christmas 2006. And so for me, it took a life-changing or several life-changing events for me to say, hey, I may not be here tomorrow. I know I want to travel, you know, but, you know, I didn't. But after Katrina, I said, oh, hell no. <laughs> and sometimes you have to talk to yourself like that. You know, and those that went like Kina and Jasmine that went through that experience, you know, it changes your perspective. And so one a bit of advice I would give to you, don't wait for a traumatic event. That's right. If traveling is your truth, you find a way to do it. There's a whole family and community here to help you. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. An entire family. So that's, for me, that's my story. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Um, I didn't have a life-changing situation that made me start, like at 17, I was a voracious reader. When I was young, I read everything, and I was like, oh, I want to I know about that. I want to go there. And But my mother, my mother's thing, she, there were six of us, and she told all of us, the world does not stop at the corner of our street. Mm. We lived in the hood, didn't have a whole lot, but she tried to expose us to the theater, to just want to do, I could go be an usher, but you, know, you find a way to do what you want to do. But you can't be defined by that. And my mother traveled. My dad didn't, but my mom and her girls, 
They take a girls trip every year, and I look at the pictures and hear my father talk trash about you know the pictures. But just listening to them, I was like, I want to go there. I want to do that. And I always believed I could because when I was, I think, probably nine years old, there was something back in the day called Children's International Summer Village, and I heard about it. It's like you can go and live with a family and go to school with somebody else for a school year. I was nine years old. I told my mom, I said, I want to do that. Nice. So I, I, I entered the contest, had to, you had to write these things, and you had to go to this panel to stand in front of them. And that actually happened to be one of my best mommy moments. My mom and I are going, my mom and I are going there, and we didn't have a car, so we taking buses, the trains, to whatever to get there. And my mom, we walking down, and she's fixing my hair and telling me how proud they were of me. And if you get to go, this will be awesome. Nobody in our family's ever been out of the country. And I, and, and not even thinking about what I was getting ready to go stand in front of people and do at nine. My mother, I was like, damn, she believes in me. She's proud of me. And she made this sacrifice to take a day off work. You know, back in our day, like what? Take a day off work. You know, <laughs> took a day off work to to get a, to get me there. And she believed in me. And so it was like that was my thing that when it started with the travel. So it's just something that, like I said, when you get older, when I hit 40, I was coming in, like really feel like I was coming into myself. But I did the marriage thing early, got married in college, still graduated. I was the young wife, the young executive's wife. I was doing all that. And I, the whole time I was sitting, I was like, I love him, but what about me? You know, it's like, man, he had no interest in traveling at all. So I was still, so work ended up taking me out of the country. And I'd be in countries, like, putting systems in embassies, and I, I'm there, and I'd be the only female. And sometimes I got separated, even from them. And so I just, at that point, I said, no fear. You know, no fear. There's no fe if there's no fear, then you can go and achieve those things and do those things. But I, I think that you do it when you do it. Because I think some people say, oh, I didn't do it when I was younger, and I feel bad as long as you're doing it. Or if you feel like you've got to do it yeah. before you turn a certain age. No, you don't. Because when it's supposed to happen, the universe will put it you in place. The money will come from somewhere. The place that you're supposed to be, you'll meet the people that you're supposed to meet. And it comes together. So don't put yourself on timetables. Because yours, my story ain't like, like Kathleen's. It's not like Veronica's. It's, it's your story. And so you got to be the hero of your story. And you make it happen when it's supposed to. Nice. I like that. You can clap for that. That's good. That's good stuff. The next question I want to ask you guys is a. Excuse me. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Answer go that go question. ahead. Okay. So I uh, took my very first trip around the world, solo trip around the world, at age 40. And when I was on that journey, I was like, wow, look at all these young people and all these old people. We're middle aged people. I guess they're busy having kids or working or something. But. I, I was seeing all these old people were having so much trouble navigating the pyramids or navigating, the, you know, the Sistine Chapel, and I thought, you know, I'm not going to wait till I'm 65 to see the world. You know, I am going to make travel a part of my life on a regular basis. And so I ended up meeting with a financial planner and created the wealth that I needed in my life so that I could travel. So I really encourage you, you know, I mean, you don't let money be an obstacle. There's uh, professionals out there who can help you. Okay, here's your dream. It costs X amount of dollars to get to your dream, and then you get figure out a way to get that money. And I use the uh, avenue of real estate and made some smart investments and created the freedom so that I basically retired at age 40 and have been traveling now for the last 24 years, be several, several months a year. And um, I'm an attorney by profession, but I only work part time because travel is what I really want to do. And I, I, I created a way to make it a nice. permanent part of regular part of my life. Nice. That's good stuff. <laughs> Quick question for you guys. I just want to um, piggyback on something you said. The theme I heard was how can you help? Because um, we all have that family member. They go like my mom. Barbados is her spot. <laughs> She's not going nowhere than Barbados. <laughs> then we have the next crew of people that down south, that's their spot. When you ask them, are you going to travel? I'm going down south. I'm going to the Caribbean. Could you give some advice to folks that maybe someone they know, not them, but somebody they know to travel outside of the country, see something new. What would advice would you give those? In? Well, I think it's an interesting question you should ask today because I think in New York it's Global Citizen Day today, yeah. isn't it? They're having a big yeah. festival in Central Park, and I often refer to myself as a, a citizen of the world. Mm -hmm. And when I talk to people who are reluctant to travel outside of their comfort zone, generally I'll say, well, try a country 
abroad where they speak English. You know, just try that. You know, maybe England or I truly love New Zealand. That was a fascinating place. Or try South Africa. Or, you know, just for to take baby steps, mm -hmm. and then maybe next try a, a, a country. You know, where you can learn a little bit of the language. Nice. Anybody else want to chime in? Um, for me, I tell. I would suggest don't let money. We we make money our God sometimes, and we let that determine whether or not we can do anything. It's really not the barrier. It's about having this desire to go beyond the boundaries of life. Um, what I have told my own friends was that people live differently in the world than we do. And when you get outside of the comfort zone of going to the same places all the time, and you see people living in huts, or drinking water that could kill them, or not having a Walmart to go to, you know, it's like, we're privileged. We're privileged with all of our, I said earlier to Roger, with all the racism we experience in this country, I'm afforded an experience of being an American in other countries and that privilege. And yet when I come back home and still experience all the racism, I still have the privilege of drinking clean water. And there's a refrigerator down the hall from my bedroom. And I can push a button for pretty much anything I want or need. And yet I just left people who live with so less, and yet there's so much more about community and family. They understand their, who they are and not what they think they need to have to do anything. So I share this with you all, as well as my own group of friends and family. And they've been inspired by me. They're like, wow. I said, I'm living a wild life, y'all. And I, I'll send you a text message. Um, I know a lot of you here are young enough to be my children, so your parents are my age. And so I would, I'm like, I probe. If they're afraid to or they're hesitant traveling outside of the Caribbean, I would ask, okay, what are you afraid of? You have to first identify what what are they afraid of? Why are they hesitant? And then, you know, create an environment where they feel comfortable being transparent. And then once when they put that out there, then find solutions to that. You know, I mean, it could be as simple as, well, they may not speak English, or I don't feel comfortable with other people. You know, um, first find out what's holding them back, and then find viable solutions that will address it so they won't have any other reason, you know, to bring up to not go. Okay, that's good stuff. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, since we have 10 minutes left, and I'm gonna turn it over the questions to you guys, um, money, a lot of people are just, you're, they're afraid to, like how do you, suppose you wanna go to one of these exotic places or a place that you, outside your comfort zone, talk about how did you guys um, get the money to do it, or because some young people just, they will just go they'll just like leave their jobs and just fly out. But older people, we got some of some career people, they have to ask permission, they gotta plan it out in June, in July and August. How do you, how do you guys uh, come up with the, the, um, the funding, help those people come up with the funding to go to places that they really dreamed of going, in your opinion? Y'all heard about Push Your Key earlier. Yeah. So, but one, one positive yes. thing, uh, not just, that's not the only thing about nomads, a lot of people get confused with that because they hear about, oh, they got this glitch fair. That's not who we are. That's like a small facet of it. But somebody will get a discount fare. That thing hit no man is all of a sudden, you hear 400 people, I got it, I booked it, I booked it. So you look for specials. And, I mean, that, that's what I do. I, I'm always on a site looking and see, oh, and I'll plan mine around that, okay, I can, I can go here for that much. Okay, I'll plan my vacation. But like I said at the beginning, I'm a negotiator. That's what I do for my job. So I feel like I would be doing myself a disservice when I go into every new job if I don't go in there and negotiate my, my uh, vacation time. Because I feel like this is a test. They're trying to see how good I am at this. So that's what I go in and do. I, go, I walk in every job and say, oh, I already had a vacation plan for, you know, November. I don't have anything planned. And I, it's kind of, it's kind of like, Say that again, because somebody needs to write, write that down. Because 
But you, you need go that. in because it's, it's easier. It's easier to negotiate stuff at the beginning. Your money, your time, all that. Because once they get you in there. Mm, and that's not that easy. So I won't have anything planned, but I go outside. Yeah, I kind of got eight days planned, and I kind of don't need this to count against my vacation. So, and, they, and they'll make that deal with you going into it. I never, every job I've ever had, I did that at the beginning, and it was not a problem. That's good stuff. Uh, but for, for um, planning purposes, you save the money, you do the things, because when you look at how much wasteful spending that we all can do, you know, I pack my lunch. I pack very good, healthy lunches for myself. So that way, I know I don't have that $20 a day at lunchtime, you know, every day. But, but I've done, over the course of my life, planning and saving. And like I said, I lived in the Middle East, so I was in that, de that defense money, too, you know. So I was able to put things aside and save. Right. And when I came back, when I came back because my mom was ill, I was in a position where I had money in the bank. I said, I'm taking a year off and I'm going to hit two countries every month. And it was like right in that time that I met No Madness. So everybody kept saying, how you can keep going on every No Madness trip? And I was like, I, I'm sitting there all day because I don't have, you know, I'm not working, hitting that thing just like everybody else trying to get on that trip. I told so, y'all, this is not a game. Uh, but yeah, but it's about, it's about your priorities. People joke about that, but it's about your priorities. If it's what you want to do, you know, you save the money for it, you cut some things, you look for a deal, and then you go. Uh, just real quick for me, I'm not a shopper. I hate shopping. I hate it. I hate it. I buy Walmart clothes. I buy all of that. Well, you're very kind. But the reason why I do that is because Katrina taught me you can literally lose everything overnight. Wow. Everything. Everything. And so I know that there are some people that like to shop. They must have the latest handbag or all that. I'm not knocking you. That's your deal. That's your deal. But travel is important to me. Mm -hmm. And so that's where my money goes. You know, and so, I mean, and there are deals out there. I mean, I'm going to Dubai with Kino and over 200 other folk, wow. you know, because, wow. you know, um, that's a fair glitch. But also, you know, and that's $629, you know. That's all, you know, got to compare it to. But I say all that to say that what's important to you? Is it that latest handbag? Is it the, no, honey, mm -mm. This, is, this was $19. <laughs> and, I was, and I've had this for about at least 10, 15 years. I don't care, because I don't care. <laughs> and you know how to put it together. You gotta know how to put it together. And I made this. Yes, come on. Come on, can we get so, snaps? Mine, That's fly, man. Mine's just real quick. I like this group. And I did all what's been said. Um, I'm fortunate enough to live in a city that I don't need transportation. And my car died and left in February. And I said, oh, I'll get a car in a couple of months. I don't have a car. I don't even miss it. I don't miss parking, tickets, none of that. Right. And all that money I was spending every month to maintain this thing, I'm traveling. Nice. And I can even, and I want you to think about, you can leave work on Thursday and be back Sunday, Monday, early in the morning and still go to work. That's strategy. You got to figure it out. Because if you really love this, because this is something I love, I, this, I told my job, I'm sorry, traveling is part of my life and y'all just need to get it. Okay? Because my director said, well, you know, you can't really travel. Like, I said, I'm sorry, traveling is part of my life, and y'all just need to get it. Okay? Because this is who I am. And so I figure it out. I put aside the money, or I go, what? $200 to London? From San Francisco? I got to go. <laughs> and I don't yeah. care if it's only four, yeah. five days and there's tribe there's somebody let me sleep on a cone up okay i'll take up the corner of your couch that's all you need but we you have to look at it if it's something you love wow you is anything you love to do you'll find a way to do it that's good. so because i love this i found a way to do it and still maintain my own Sanity. Nice. Because I don't, we're the country that's working ourselves to death. Yeah. Yeah. For what? Right. Right. They don't come back and tell you thank you. Nope. They right. go hire somebody else. And they give you, yo, and they give you a watch. That's a watch, a watch after all of that, man. A watch. I don't need yeah. your watch. They might not even give you that. Come on now. I've been laid off before, so I already know. Come on, you were, you'd be like, really? That's it? Sorry. <laughs> 
speaking of couches, one way that I manage to save money when I travel is I belong to couchsurfing.com and uh -oh. Intervac and a number of home exchange groups so that when I travel, I don't have to pay for lodging, which is generally the most expensive part of a trip. So I, for example, I have this uh, family in Paris. I swap homes with them. They live in my house. I live in, in San Francisco as well and swap and pay. So there's, there, that gets rid of a lot of the expense. Also, I'm a member of a number of fare alert groups. So when fares drop to a certain level that I'm looking for, then I'm notified about that. And then also, if money is a challenge, I tend to go to countries where the, it, the dollar is very strong. So I mean, I lived in Bali like a queen on $10 a day. And so I was renting my house out and living there at, for $10 a day at a beautiful little cottage by a river, and that was including breakfast. You know, and I'm renting my house out, I'm actually making money because the amount the guys pay me for my house is more than what I'm spending abro abroad. So, you know, sometimes it, it can actually be cost effective to travel. So just have to do the math. And again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a financial planner is really useful. Okay, cool. Since we have one minute left, um, I just want to ask is anybody on? Oh, no question? Go ahead. I want to know um, if you had to give one to two sentences, like really succinct kind of quote that encapsulates kind of like your mission statement that you can impart on generations younger than you about travel mm -hmm. and impact on your life. One to two sentences, what would your travel model be? That's a great question. So for me to answer that, Evie, I got to share. I, all of my siblings in my family are severely ill. I have a lot of, I mean severely, like dying illnesses. And of the five of us, I'm the only one well. One has already passed away and there's three left. So I say, live now. Live now. I'm watching my mother in hospice right now. And I have a legacy of grandchildren. And I think what I'm doing is preparing them and opening their minds up that the world is theirs. So the world is yours, that's my statement. The world is yours, go get it. Go see it and go experience it. Stand in your truth. Not your parents, not your friends. Stand in your, right, sorry. Stand in your truth. That's important, you don't wanna look up and then you're 40, 50, whatever, right. and you haven't done what you're called to do. Yes. When you stand in your truth, the universe will rise up in alignment. Mm -hmm. Stand in your truth. Mm -hmm. When I did that, I was a guest on Oprah with my jewelry, all of that. Stand in your truth. Mm -hmm. You hear me, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess uh, mine would be, the first one is, I live for the possibility. With everything that I do, I live for the possibility. I know it's an opportunity, and it's there, and, it's, and it can be mine. The second one I want to say is, I was been telling a few people here today, I'm here in New York with two of the people that were in that Panama accident. I'm staying at one's house, and when I walked in yesterday, she was at work, I walked in, there's a big board, and it was chalk, written down there in chalk, it said, I can do whatever I want to do. So I, I, before I finished reading it, I was like, oh, that's a nice affirmation. And it said, I can do what I want to do because I almost died. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, wow, I mean, that just hit me because ever since I think when I had turned 40, that became my motto, I can do whatever I want to do because I'm 40. You know, I, I survived it to here because there were times where I grew up and probably a lot of things that I was around that you don't know if you're going to live to 25. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, here, I'm almost 60 now. And so I do, I truly, truly believe that um, Live, live your life based on you knowing that you can be and do and have whatever it is that, that you want to. And I remember as I was um, embarking on my first trip around the world and I was terrified and I was talking to one of my girlfriends about it and she imparted this word of, these words of wisdom that have um, supported me throughout my journeys. She said, money is a replenishable resource, time is not. <laughs> Elaine, yeah, get on that plane. <laughs> no, I got your back, you know, and, uh, and I made it back eight months later. Uh, you know, it, it was, and then my other one that I, sw I swear by after going to 59 countries, I can say that truly, if you follow your bliss, doors open. Wow. 
That's powerful. Could you? Oh, we have time for we have time for questions. No. You, five seconds. I gotta testify real quick. Hello, family. Um, hello, ladies. Moderator. Okay. Y'all speak in my spirit and this whole front row right here and the rest of these people right here, right? And I, and I say that to say that I, saw, I find you guys saying things that I've said to people, right? And I'm, and I'm younger than y'all. And, and people look at me like I'm crazy. And they look at me like I'm being disrespectful. Like y'all like my mom's age. And they looking at me like, Keisha, sit down. Like, why are you talking like that? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just trying to see the world, and I'm trying to see what the hell is right. out there. Nice. Nice. And y'all telling me I just got all the validation I need from the aunties up here. That's it. I'm not crazy, and I'm That's not it. being disrespectful. That's it. I'm just standing in my truth. And you're going to be all right. That's how. I ain't got no more time. That's it. Can you guys do me a favor and just please stand and just give these beautiful ladies a round of applause? At the same time, can we make some noise for being a part of the second annual No Madness Travel Conference? My name is Roger Maloney. Thank you guys so much. I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say one thing before we leave. I want you all to know that as um, uh, an elder, an auntie, travel auntie, I'm so proud of y'all. Amen. I look, I, Amen. You all have given me some stuff because it's like the wisdom that I impart. Every trip I've gone on, because she would ask me, she said, but you're older. What's it like a lot of people going on trips are younger? I said, you do what you want to do. The other stuff you don't have to do. But I want y'all, y'all creating your professions where you can, where it's not travel specific. You're doing remote jobs. You you creating your own thing. And I see you having jobs and, and getting the education. I meet young scientists and I'm like, go get it. Damn, you make me proud. So I just wanted to say, just like what we give to you, Please believe you are giving it back to us and keep us motivated to keep moving that way. And I've got to say thank you to Evita because it's not about travel. The relationships and the connections and that yes. I have made because yes. of you, yes. I thank you for standing yes. in your truth. Yes. Because if you had not done that, none of this would be we'll here. Be here. Right. None of this yes. would be here. Yes. So thank you. You are impacting lives that you don't even you know. Even know. Yeah. You don't even know. You've touched my grandchildren's life. My grandchild, who is six, was at our barbecue checking in, no madness people, and was saying, are you in tribe? Okay, fill this out. Are you in tribe? Are you in out? You, cry you didn't even know that. But this is, this is, we, and I want to say, be kinder to each other. Start being kinder to each other. Love each other. We are so quick to judge what we don't know. Just love people. Say good morning. Hello. How you doing? They do it in other parts of the world and they don't have a lot of money. They greet each other. They love each other. We are those people. Show the love because it's here in this room. Thank you, Evie, Thank you. for changing my life. Now I gotta get on the mic. I can't, I can't. You guys, we did it again. Another one, I can't believe it. <laughs> Another one in the books. Ladies, thank you, everybody that has attended. We appreciate you. Um, we have the workshop hour, um, which for anybody that has the first class, I'm gonna ask all moderators and panelists to go back into the green room and anybody with the first class ticket to follow. You can build with each other. I'll be back there. I will try to get my bearings about myself. Um, <laughs> so we can actually talk, yes, all of it, all of it. Um, but we also have a really cool travel project. I believe um, we're putting together um, smudge sticks. I don't know how many of you burn sage and things like that in your apartment and your um, houses, but we have an amazing, our, our, um, it's sponsored by this group called Bitchcraft, which I actually think is really cute and quirky. And we are actually making travel size smudge sticks for people that want them. So if you wanna bring them with you as you travel around the world and kind of clear the energy up, they're gonna be doing that during this hour, um, as well as we have henna that's here. So if you wanna get some henna done, um, we'll be setting that up. Uh, I'm just gonna ask everybody for your patience as we start to take some of the chairs out of here just to make more room for you guys. And, um, and uh, oh God, okay. <laughs> And again, I just want to say thank you, and my father wants to say something, so. I just don't really want to say anything other than we had, a, we 
did something at the end after the funeral of um, one of the tribal tribe members at my house down in South Carolina. And if you don't mind, I'd like to end today with it. And that's just everybody join hands and just take a moment of quiet reflection as we all travel our destinations back home. Awesome day today. Thank you all and continue success. Thank you. Thank you.